So now we're going to work on creating a door panel and we're going to create it essentially the same way in the beginning here as we did with Arch. We'll start with a 3D plane and we will change its initial settings so of course make sure it's live and have wireframe on. And under initialize we're going to change the H divide and the V divide down to 3 so that we have a symmetrical line down the middle and then we'll click make poly mesh. So now that we're working with our poly mesh, what we'll do is divide it a few times, again with smooth turned off. And once we have it divided, check to see that you have enough resolution to carve in some nice details, which we do in this case. And then at this point we'll jump back into Projection Master by pressing the letter G. We will turn on deformations, keep normalize off, fade off, and double sided off. So now that we've dropped this, we'll choose our line stroke again, uh, alpha 0, 1. And in the stroke palette, make sure that your spacing is turned up to 2. And when we hold the shift key, you'll notice just like we did with our pillar, we can get it to snap either straight across, or in this case, we're going to snap it at a 45 degree angle. And we're just going to draw in a few strokes here. Now, something that's important to do is you notice the X that's created in the center here by the mesh that we have turned on, or the frame we have turned on. You want to make sure you draw over those. That way there's no hole, and when we kind of do the mirror symmetry here, it will uh, connect all the edges. So we'll use a little Z sub to carve in a bit, and then we will hit G to jump out of Projection Master, and then of course now we have our strokes laid down in 3D. So what are we going to do with these simple strokes? Well, what's great if we go down to deformations is we have an option here called Smart Resim. So we're going to mask off the side we want to Smart Resim, scroll down to the deformations pull down, open that up, and click Smart Resim. And then we'll do the same thing now for the top, where we'll make sure that we have the bottom masked off, and then again click Smart Resim. So you'll also notice here in the deformations pull down, we have an option here called rotate. What we want to do is rotate everything 45 degrees. So we'll just scroll that over a little bit and type in 45 so that we can get an exact rotation. So what we'll do now is stretch this out with the same method we used before by masking and then transposing. So we'll mask, I'll click on my move option and then just stretch that over. I'll clear the mask and then do the same thing here where we'll select the bottom. And don't forget in your masking pull down you can actually hide your mask. So I'll open that up and then hide mask. And then we will again use transpose and stretch that out so we get a little bit more of a doorway instead of a perfect square. So even though this looks good, if we turn on frame you'll notice that the polygons have been kind of pushed and stretched around. And there's a really great technique that we can use to basically project the polygons back into a uniform manner. So again we'll create a plain 3D and convert that over to a poly mesh. And then once that's converted into a poly mesh we'll divide so that we have enough resolution to work with. And then we're going to jump back into Projection Master. And for our Projection Master settings, all we're going to have checked is deformations. You can turn everything else off. And let's take that doorway that we've just created, and we will draw that into our canvas right on top of our plane. We'll click the Move option so we can position that where we want it to be. And we're doing this right on top of our polygon uh, poly mesh that we've created, which has a uniform layout. We'll pick that up and once we do it's projected so now we have the same thing except for our polygons are looking nice and clean and not stretched out across the surface. So let's just go back to a regular poly mesh primitive plane here that we're going to divide a few more times and then jump back into Projection Master with that basic plane. So you can see here I have just a um, simple plane, nothing on it. We'll jump into Projection Master with our deformation settings and then that frame with the nice geometry will draw back onto the surface. Again with move, rotate, and scale we can position this frame. And Once we have it positioned, don't forget you can click Shift S and with Shift S we can duplicate that and with move we'll move it across and then we will Shift S duplicate it two more times so that we can set up our door frame. Now just like we did with the pillar let's add um, a lot more detail and the way we're going to do this is with that alpha that we used earlier so we'll go ahead and select it in the alpha palette do any blurring if you need to do so and we'll use our drag rectangle to draw that in 
and use move, scale, and rotate to position that a bit better to get it in exact place. And once we have it looking exactly like we want to, we will shift S and duplicate that three more times. I can't stress enough how powerful it is to be able to draw down a stroke and be able to affect the Z add, the Z sub, the intensity, its position and location. It's so convenient to be able to do that after the fact. Now that we've drawn that in, let's go ahead and add in a few more subtools that we created earlier. These are just some little ornaments that we worked on. And we're just projecting these in like we've done in the last few steps. So we'll just drag that in using Z add, move to position it a little bit. And then once we have that in place, we'll go ahead and bring in one other one. And we'll just add this to the bottom here. So I'll draw it in, use rotate, and then we'll move that across the surface down to the bottom. So it's amazing how you can just kind of lay down as many tools as you want, and as long as you have your original surface divided high enough, this is going to project nicely onto the surface. So we'll pick that up, and then now we have all that projected onto a 3D surface, which we will then use later on in our final composite. So of course, just like we did before, we will save that out and then move on to the next step.